Hey guys, Tony here, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the latest dedicated home theater projector from BenQ, which is the W4000i, also known as the HT4550i in the United States. I've always been impressed with BenQ's focus on image quality and providing a suite of calibration and tweaking options. And there is one feature this projector has, even over much more expensive brand projectors, which I'll reveal later in the video. But if you're in the market for a proper cinema projector with a 5,000 Australian dollar or 3,000 USD budget, then you will want to stay tuned to the end where I give my verdict. I'd like to thank BenQ for sending this in for review. It's not a sponsored video, no money has changed hands, and it will be returned once the review is finished. And as always, I will give my subjective and unbiased feedback. Now that's out of the way, let's not waste any more time, let's get into the video. So looking at the projector while I unbox it, we have a compact chassis weighing in at only 6.6 kilograms and dimensions of 420.5 millimeters wide by 135 millimeters high and 312 millimeters deep. Unlike some other BenQ projectors, this one comes in black, which makes it more suited to a dedicated home theater. There is a gold accent badge at the top, not that it adds to the performance, but it's a nice touch. There are adjustment feet at the bottom and a lens cap at the front to keep the lens dust free. There are manual controls for lens shift and focus as well as optical zoom, so no electronic adjustments which means you will still get the good stuff without having to pay the additional cost of electronics bring. So in the box we have the power adapter, BenQ Android TV dongle, projector remote, and something very cool, and that is an individual calibration report showing this actual unit tested when measured with a sensor. We then have two sets of batteries, one for the projector remote and the other one for the remote in the Android TV box. Then finally, we have the quick start guide, which let's face it, I didn't read. The final step is to install the BenQ dongle, which is a simple matter of removing one screw and then plugging in the HDMI and the micro USB, closing it back up and job done. The image is decently bright at a reported 3200 ANSI lumens and one of the crispiest 4K images that I've seen from a pixel shifting projector, classed as a true HD resolution with a 0.65 DMD. The W4000i supports 100% of the Rec. 709 and DCI-P3 color gamuts with a color filter on offer to expand the color space in HDR10 mode, but I'll cover off more about that later in the video. There is keystone correction available, however, it's best to align your projector so that you don't get light bleed or loss of pixels. I didn't bother too much as I have mine resting on a box for the review and you can adjust focus and zoom while using the manual toggles and I didn't really have a lot of trouble getting the image dialed in. The W4000i will support from 100 inches all the way up to 150 inches. There is a mono 5 watt speaker but I wouldn't recommend using it and as it's marketed as a dedicated cinema projector it would be a must to pair this with a receiver and use a speaker setup. There is also support for 3D, but as usual with my videos, I don't review 3D or have any means of testing it out, but it is there if you need it. Looking back at the projector, we have all of the usual inputs and outputs with arc support, a 12 volt trigger, and also support for control 4, so it does seem to tick all the boxes for a dedicated home theater. But how does it perform? As mentioned, we have a true 4K resolution and consistent to what I've been coming to expect from BenQ, the image was clear, sharp, and the colors were very cinematic. HDR10 support and filmmaker mode are also available where there are some smarts behind the scenes that help with the black levels and the dynamic contrast. The demos I tested using the Zidu Z9X player showed that there was an excellent level of contrast and dynamic range in a single frame. I also tested one of my favorite scenes in The Hobbit, Desolation of Smaug, where he climbs through the trees with and without the color filter. And while there was a difference, I don't think that you even need the color filter as the images are quite vibrant without it. There is also a true 24p mode, which assists with smooth playback as film is shot in 24 frames per second, but often played back at 23.976 frames. And this can sometimes create image judder. 
The playback I found was smooth with or without this mode, but good on BenQ for adding it in. There are controls for adjusting HDR brightness, however I felt leaving it on zero was the best result. The biggest feature of this projector in my opinion is the suite of calibration options. There is an 11 point grayscale correction available, which I have never seen on a projector before. This means that you can correct the balance of red, green and blue at each of the 10% intervals from black to white. You can also adjust the colors to bring out the best result. As you can see from the demos, the imagery production is very cinematic. Playing back from the Apple TV, I was really impressed with the picture quality. As shown earlier, there is included an Android TV dongle, which supports Netflix, as most of the dongles provided with projectors don't, so this was a bonus. The experience was quite quick and punchy, and I had no issues playing back movies from Amazon Prime and Netflix, and the experience was quite good. I usually recommend only using a dedicated player or Apple TV, however this is the full Android TV OS experience, so very similar to what you'd expect from a Shield Pro, minus some of the gaming features. A nice inclusion if you don't have a dedicated player. While looking at the W4000i, there are a number of things to like about this projector. Its form factor, weight and colour make it suitable for a home theatre and it has proper calibration features that some more expensive projectors don't have such as the 11 point grayscale correction and advanced colour management. You really can dial this projector in. For this review I wanted to see how it performed out of the box and I was really impressed so if you don't have a sensor like I do, you can still make the most of it and get a great picture using the filmmaker mode and tweaking the settings to your liking. Coming in at 5000 Australian dollars or 3000 US, this falls in the mid-range of dedicated cinema projectors while still boosting a huge array of features. Don't forget that having an LED light source means up to 30,000 hours of use. Moving to some of the negatives, even though this projector is rated at 3200 anti lumens, I did feel that it could be brighter especially in the HDR mode with the colour filter engaged. The image still looked incredibly cinematic, but I think to get the best results, go without the colour filter and it will be just as good especially once calibrated. Another thing is the lack of electronic focus, lens shift and zoom, but again I know this could significantly add to the cost and other brands that I won't mention here have gone a similar route. Overall I think that this is a fantastic projector and definitely a contender if you're in the market for a mid-range priced dedicated home cinema projector. Maybe you have an older BenQ 4K and want to go the LED route so that you don't have to concern yourself with changing bulbs. Either way you won't be disappointed. If you invest a couple of hundred bucks in a calibration sensor and learn the free software HCFR, you could unlock this projector's potential even more. With HDR10 support and all of the filmmaker and advanced modes, I think that what BenQ have packed into this projector is what other manufacturers should aspire to. I have links in the description to where you can buy one, both in the USA and Australia, so check them out down below. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more dedicated home theatre content. I'd like to thank BenQ for sending the projector in for review, I've really enjoyed my time with it. Thanks to everyone for watching, but that's it for this one, you'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>